Hello everyone, my name is Jimbo Mathis, J-I-M-B-O-M-A-T-H-U-S, and I am not in Yachtna Bottoms, Mississippi, which is where I live. I am in Oakland, California right now, uh, as you can see, and uh, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Uh, the reason being is that I'm an entertainer, I've been an entertainer and a songwriter and a producer since I was six years old. And uh, I found out about your audition, guys, and uh, since I'm on the road now, I'm going to have to do it here in Oakland. But luckily, uh, I come prepared with my knowledge of cooking and a kitchen in the uh, Airbnb apartment we have rented. So, we're cool. We're all a go. So, I'm about to cook you something delicious, and let's touch base in a short minute. <laughs> cool. Well, here we are at the at the B&B where we're staying, and uh, come on in. I think it's just fortuitous. I got a really nice kitchen, and we're going to improvise. So, come on in, check out the kitchen, check out the band, and uh, let's see what's going on. Here's the band. That's Paco. There's Stu Baby. Say hey, Stu Baby. Hey, Stu Baby. <laughs> yeah, and there's Young Blood over yonder. And uh, so come on, here we go. Which is pretty nice. I mean, this is really fortuitous that I was able to I score this. Like I said, I'm on the road. Uh, had no idea I was going to be doing this today. So uh, let's just get started. I just hooked it to a grocery store uh, that was luckily in the area. Uh, let's unpack the groceries and then let me wrap with you about my uh, concept for cooking and, and what I got going on on the cooking tip. Um, as of me, I'm 48 years old. Uh, my father's, well, my, on my father's side, it's Essex, England, and Scottish, and uh, a little bit of, from the Isle of Man. Uh, on my mother's side is where my cooking comes from, and that's Italian. And uh, that's a, a Delta Italian, uh, and that's Mississippi Delta. And they were immigrants. Uh, my great grandmother, Wheezy, her sister, Jojo, and Mei Mei. Uh, I grew who I grew up with and knew uh, from a babe, didn't even hardly speak English. Uh, they knew how to curse somewhat and uh, uh, we won't go into all that. They were incredible cooks. It gave me the heart and soul of my, uh, my vision for cooking. I call it Dago Gumbo because it's a, the Dago is a, it's, it's, it's a term for Italians and that's what we call each other in the Delta. So I've folded it over and mixed it with some Creole. Uh, elements and, and I call it Dago Gumbo. So what I'm going to cook for you here in this beautiful kitchen is what I call Gizzard Cacciatore. And so come on, I'll show you what I got real quick. And uh, we're just going to, like I say, I'm improvising. So uh, uh, like I say, um, my great grandmothers, my great aunts, they, um, oh, they showed me the, the real cooking. And I was able to actually go to Bassignana, Italy in my early 30s um, and to, I had to buy a can opener, uh, and to cook as an adult with Wanda, who was one of the, the great great grandmother's cousins. And she had a kitchen about the size of this, if, about the size of a closet, a stove and a sink, and, and, and she had a window here and a, a little rose bush set outside. And, and I wanted to watch her make the spaghetti gravy. Uh, she was making squirrel stew fry. And, uh, and over polenta. And so she would get in there about six o'clock in the morning just as the sun was coming in. And I'd say, Wanda, show me how to make the, 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 the Dago gumbo. And she would just go slow, slow, slow. So it was like almost like a magic trick to watch her cook with the sun coming in. And, and it was just a, it was a soulful thing to watch her cook all day and get ready for, uh, get ready for lunch. And uh, so I know that that a, a professional chef is it's all uh, rock and roll so but at the heart of whatever I'm going to get at it's going to be Wanda and sitting in the kitchen with the sunlight coming in and her rose bushes and slow 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 so let's get on with the Dago gumbo I was able to find some cool uh, homemade pasta it's got an expiration date on it of course I prefer to make my own um, parmesan cheese I don't have a grater so I had to buy some of that again Got to bread the chicken. Um, that looked pretty good. That was two dollars. Uh, I'm a 
frugal chef. I like finding my ingredients in funky, out of the way places. You know, I, I don't. I, I prefer to to buy a, a, an onion from a dude that's just grew it on the and selling it to me on the side of the road. It just tastes better to me. So, I like to shop and I like to find the, the ingredients that, that fit the, the dish I'm trying to make. Uh, of course, a garlic, uh, a little tomato paste. Uh, normally, uh, with the with the Bassignana Northern Italian cuisine, every recipe though does start with first you boil a big fat hen, and <laughs> that's how every recipe starts from Wheezy. And they would get the stock from that, and then they would cut it up and make different things out of every piece of the, of the, of the chicken. Um, I don't I really have my knife with me and everything, so I just went ahead and got a package of some thighs, which I'm going to wash off. Uh, since it's fancy for y'all, I got some pearl onions out there in there, and this is something they use in the cocoa bean, which I kind of, which is the hunter's stew of, of the Cajuns. And here's the real deal, chicken gizzards and hearts, oh baby. And of course the lemon, I may need it for the artichokes, and I had to buy salt and pepper. So I'm going to get this kitchen going, I'm going to get this chicken cleaned off, so I salt and peppered, uh, get some oil heated, and then we will catch up here directly. Hello again, everyone. We're back for the next segment, and uh, luckily uh, Paco had brought his uh, hunting knife, so that's going to be my prep knife, and it does have a nice keen edge on it. Uh, I want to wrap with you real quick. I do have some uh, kitchen training. Um, like I said, Mississippi born and raised, uh, but I had my first success with a group called Squirrel Nut Zippers, and uh, this is as a, as a as a teenager. I moved to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And uh, I started a great band, uh, but supported myself, uh, among other things, as a prep cook and, uh, oh my goodness, a butcher. Uh, I did busing tables, all for a great chef by the name of Bill Neal. And Bill Neal was, uh, was in Chapel Hill, and he started Farrington House, and they started Crook's Corner. His wife, Morton, started uh, La Residence, which is a French place. Um, and so I learned the basics of prep. I uh, started as a dishwasher, I was a bread maker, a paste, uh, um, so a little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, of um, saute. Uh, I was never in charge of the kitchen, but I worked pretty much every job uh, in the kitchen. Uh, so I did get some chops from, from uh, a man by the name of Bill Neal, who's a, a great chef. Um, and he was a southern chef and it was made a great fusion out of the old arts of southern cooking. So I wanted to lay a little bit of that on you. And uh, we're coming right back uh, with, the, uh, with the Dago gumbo. We'll be prepared here in oh, a couple of hours. So I'll see you back at the table. I told you I'd be back and uh, as scheduled 5 p.m. here in Oakland. And uh, so proud to have made such a, a wonderful dish for y'all feeling like you really would enjoy eating it. Uh, it's just a little stuffed artichoke, uh, a little Dago gumbo with some delicious pasta. And uh, here goes our boys. A few of them around on the street, but we're gonna eat here directly. Um, of course, everybody's enjoying it. How you feeling, boys? It's lovely. Is it to die for? Indeed. As we say in Clarksdale, it's to die for. So. Y'all consider me, I want to be on your show. We'll have fun, we'll cook some great food, and we will really, really have a good time. So, holler at your boy, Jimbo Mathis. Later, alligator. Well, we told y'all a little bit about me today, and uh, told you about how I feel about what I do in the kitchen, and I'm gonna show you about what I do with the music. I look forward to cooking for you, I look forward to having fun with you, and uh, there's so much more I can show you, but we're gonna sing you out like this with my theme song, Who Will Stop My Gravy When I'm Dead and Gone. Who will stop my gravy?